Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Bonnie, and I'm joined by Katie, Leah, and Amy talking about our one cool naturalist gal. Amy already talked talked about Janaki and all, uh, but before we dive back in, Leah's going to tell us what's going on on the Gals Guide calendar for this week. That's right. So for the second week in April, April 11th through the 17th, it's the last week to bring in your nuts. That's right. Ah! We're building a squirrel library <laughs> called the Nut House for Fairyville. So bring in your acorns, peanuts, and hazelnuts. You get the idea. We'll also have tons of puns and jokes and giggles all along the way. Uh, but you get to paint your nuts, glitterify your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> They're all for our adorable squirrel house. And the last day to add your nuts to the library is Friday, April 15th. You don't want to miss it. Uh, also, if you would like to see pictures of our nut house, House to see if we actually are talking about these nuts. Uh, get more information like our library hours and check out galsguide.org for details. Bonnie will not stop laughing there. <laughs> uh, We're getting a little nutty. It's going to yeah. be great. But you wanted to know uh, something maybe perhaps random. I, I think my favorite little thing is that the little rug in the little nut house. Oh, yes. Squirrel, I'm pretty sure. Is that like a little heart over a butthole yeah well yep. it's in the area okay i was like is that like a sensor heart no it's it's centered with the squirrel love uh it's kind of like its belly and its butt <laughs> <laughs> of loving the squirrel when they eat them and when they excrete them <laughs> okay Squirrel love. <laughs> it's a thing. Oh, I ask my little question. Yes, Where what is go? what is your question yeah, for us? Is it on the, all the way back of this? Stuck here. Yep. Okay. Well, I want to know. Yeah. What is a natural wonder that you have seen or want to see? Is it a squirrel? Um, squirrel butthole. Squirrel rug. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. We'll get we'll get out of the squirrel nest. A little squirrely. Get all squirrely. <laughs> I can answer this one easily. Do it. That's like pretty much everything I saw while we were in Iceland. Nice. Oh, that has oh, never yeah. been anywhere as gorgeous as Iceland. Yes, we this went on the Golden Circle tour. Um, so we got to see where the uh, tectonic plates come together. Oh. Um, and then we also saw Glossforth waterfall sure. i believe it is and then um all of the geysers which that might have been my favorite oh, like first yeah. of all the hot steaming little jacuzzis that are built into sauna? the ground and then yeah getting to stand <laughs> the there and watch sauna. it erupt <laughs> yes it's like i don't know why it's so fascinating because it's so stupid you literally just stand there with a group of people <laughs> staring at a spot for two minutes Ooh. until you see it and then you're like oh it <laughs> but it I'll was never so forget cool this day. and gorgeous <laughs> that is totally fair yeah, no, that's a good one. Dun, 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 dun. I do. I was going to go with Niagara Falls. Okay, so I'm going to go with Niagara Falls. I went there two times. Um, the Canada side's much better, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been to the Canada side for like my, it was my parents' wedding anniversary or something like that. Um, and then uh, later I went with my girls during winter to the american side and that was all kinds of like crap because it was frozen it was so cold like <laughs> it felt like it was the carnies came to town or something like that like every <laughs> because like all yeah. of the little shops and souvenirs it wasn't about nature it was about selling you t-shirts and like foam fingers and it just it felt so commercialized and i'm like looking over to the canada side going you are pretty you had like tulips and flowers and a little park and <laughs> Um, but it was just so loud. It felt like there was an earthquake the entire time mm -hmm. you're there and it just kind of reverberates. And it was just like, it was extremely powerful. So I'd have to go with, uh, ye old Niagara. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, what about you? Well, I'm going to go with where I would like to go yeah, or yeah. what I would like to see. And I would love to see 
the northern lights oh yes exactly the aurora borealis yes Yes. I, i just i just would love to see and i guess you can hear them oh that they make noise as well interesting yes scary (laughs) Yes. <laughs> there I saw a YouTube video and they make weird noises apparently. Is it like electricity sort of? No, it was like a whisper. It was <laughs> it had kind of a whale sound really? vibe. Yeah, it was very interesting. Ooh. There was and maybe You've seen Doctor Who, you would be ready well, for I'm this. Well, I just like <laughs> it's like It's like a terror in the fragment of time. waves, yeah. radiation whatever. I'm like what noise? <laughs> Like, that just sounds dangerous. It's the sound of aliens. I, yeah. <laughs> and I have no idea why it makes a noise. I don't know. Maybe the YouTube videos I watched were all like gaslighting me, but apparently maybe. they make a noise. I want yeah. I just mm. I just want you know, you see those those weird like all glass bubbly bed and breakfast Ooh, where you yeah, can yeah, just yeah. lay there and look yes. up at the northern lights. I just want to do that. That'd be fun. You should there. do that. Yes, absolutely. I'm lay there I mean, you're retired it. now. <laughs> just <His> name only. <laughs> I love it. That would be gorgeous. Bonnie, yes. what's yours? Mine. It's kind of cheating a okay. little bit. Um, I want to see a good thing on the Milky Way. The good thing on the Milky like a Way? Good thing, a good view of the Milky Way. <laughs> oh, good view oh, of the Milky Way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the no yeah. light. Yeah, I, like, oh. I want to go to like one of the, um, I forget what they call them. Yeah. Like dark national parks or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw it a little bit. We went. I went to Australia mm-hmm. on the coastline. I could see it a bit there. Ooh. And that was, that was nice. That'd be so cool. But there's, I think the closest one to us here is in Pennsylvania, but there's like yeah. five in Texas. Right. So. I remember we were looking at that for, there was um, uh, the late August thing when the meteor showers come in. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, my oldest really wanted to go someplace where you could actually see them. Mm-hmm. And so we were looking at the Pennsylvania, yes. the super dark park, mm-hmm. basically. It might be called a dark park. I don't know. It's something. <laughs> it's got dark in there. Yeah. It's funny. Every time I see pictures of the Milky Way, it's like when I see pictures of the Northern Lights, I'm like, that's fake. Like, right. This can't be what it's really like. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but it's true. When it, I have to see that, too. I'll stop on it. my way. There you go. Right. <laughs> well, you, I would imagine if you're out there in the middle of nowhere, like you could probably see them. Yeah. Right. You'd probably get a twofer. It got, exactly. <laughs> yeah. it, it depends. Well, it wouldn't necessarily depend on the time of year. That's what I was thinking, but not so much. It's just more the darkness. Mm. Yeah. Would be what angle do you want to see? That's what. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, who do you have for I us, darling? Yes. Famous Hoosier lady. <gasps> oh. And naturalist author lady Jean Stratton Porter. Oh, look at that. Yeah. The Limberlass gal. So, fun fact. Yes. Do you know why it's called the Limberlost? No, I have no idea. Because it's named after a dude who is named Limber Jim. Limber Jim. Who got lost. <laughs> No. How do you put that together? That and there's expecting. like like five different versions of the like the same dude. Like they don't they How often does he get lost? <laughs> well, I like, get lost all the time. Nothing's been named after me. Five different Just wait. <laughs> all right. So Jim. Yep. <laughs> lost Jim. Lost Jim. But the limber lost is kind of a a swampy wetland area kind of in northeastern Indiana. And Jean Stratton Porter was born in Indiana on August 7th, 1863. Oh. Her mother was Mary and her father was Mark. And he was a minister and farmer. She was the last of 12 kids. Oh, my gosh. They had I'm sensing a theme. <laughs> <laughs> the theme of back in the day. Right, exactly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, three boys and eight other girls, and she was Whoa. the youngest. Oh boy. Goodness There's gracious. Catherine, Mary Ann, Anastasia, Florence, Ada, Jerome, Irvin, Leander, Lemon, Samara, and L- Louisa Jane. 
Did I catch a lemon? Lemon. <laughs> L-E-M-O-N. Lemon. Okay. All right. <laughs> yep. Okay. Sweet. Uh, but bro- <laughs> or sour. <laughs> or sour. <laughs> uh, I like what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when she was little, she uh, grew up on the farm, and farmhands would routinely shoot birds oh. so that they wouldn't eat the crops. And she was like mortified by this. Mm-hmm. So her father put a stop to the practice and told her that she now owned. Every bird that made its nest on the property. Oh, So she became the, the carer of the birds. But she had to make sure they didn't eat the crops, right? Yeah. yeah they that's called fair. her that's l- fair. little bird woman. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> little bird woman. Right? <laughs> her brother, let's see, his actual name is Leander, but they called him Laddie. Laddie. Went and swimming in the Wabash like you do in <laughs> right? Indiana. Sure. But he, he was like, dared to swim across it and he didn't make it. <gasps> oh, no. We got a brother so, down. Like, yeah, a brother make down. It, didn't make it. Didn't. Yeah, like, they drowned. Oh, like, not just like, didn't make it to the other side. Yeah, or... like never came home again. Uh, oh, no. Uh, I thought she was dared nine. Into the that was... Yeah, that's well, some yeah. lifetime guilt but, right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Oofa. But shortly after that, her family moved to Wabash in 1874, okay. and shortly after that, her mother died in uh, 1875. Did she also swim in the Wabash? No, <laughs> she had some kind of disease. Like they okay, tried to okay. like All right. move to Wabash to make it easier on Mom. They were okay. like the farm's too much, right? So they moved in with one of her older sisters, was married. Okay, so they moved into their house. Gotcha. Strength in numbers, maybe closer to amenities or something. Uh, sure. But she uh, never finished high school. Okay. Um, she met her future husband, Charles, mm-hmm. who, I'm not sure at this point, but eventually he was both a, a druggist, like Ooh. the person from the drugstore. Right. A, I wrote armor. I don't think he's an armor. Okay. Is he in the army? Farmer. 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 Oh, Siri. (laughs) Why are you spell checking? (laughs) A a hotel owner, a restaurant owner, and an oil investor. Wow. He was 13 years older than her. Okay. She was 21 and he was 34. It's not not that bad for back then. For 1870s? Yeah, sure. There you go. I mean, (laughs) it's not like she was 14. Right. Exactly. Uh, Sure. But they they corresponded for 10 months. They corresponded. And they married in 1886. Aww. They had one daughter uh, named Jeanette. It was born in 1887. Gotcha. And... She moved her family to Geneva. Switzerland? No, there's a Geneva, Indiana. Oh, okay. All right. That's what I was <laughs> like. That's like her actual name is Geneva. Oh. I forget her middle name. But That's uh, a G stands for Geneva. Yeah. Oh. She shortened it. Around the time that she met Charles, she started going by Jean. Charles and Jane. <laughs> In Geneva. Uh, Charles and Jane. <laughs> At some point, they attended the 1893 Chicago World's Fair oh. because everybody did. Everybody did. It was like two years or something. I can't remember. They're, they like were everybody. long. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to go. Katie, <laughs> you were there. <laughs> you were just too life, drunk to remember. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was there with you. <laughs> I also don't remember. <laughs> All right, so everybody who was alive at the time Uh, went to the World's Fair. Because there was nothing else to do, right? I guess. (laughs) You Uh, had to make your own ketchup. (laughs) I'm sorry, I just think about the Julie Garland Garland movie with the Meet Me in St. Louis, and they go to the fair, and she makes ketchup in the beginning. But Mm -hmm. So there's lots of stuff to do back in the day. Yes, sorry. Turning that butter and making that ketchup. I'd be doing both those things. This is awesome. Yeah. That's one of my favorite movies. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not one? even kidding you. I love all those Manelli musicals. Didn't yeah. you always want to make your own ketchup yes. after watching it? And I love no. that when they were trick or treating, if they didn't get candy, they threw flour at your face. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Cute. Oh, uh, she started writing in 1895. Gotcha. Her daughter Jeanette saved up her her pocket money. 
and gifted her a camera. Oh. And she started studying birds in the Limberloss and uh, photographing them. Okay. And she started getting published in magazines, like a ladies' home journal. Ooh. Um, And she started to write about her outrage of a trend in wildlife photographers at the time. Okay. They would, like, photograph the birds in the nest, but then they would kill the birds afterwards. I, but why? I You've got the know. photo. <laughs> I don't know. I really Just thought you were going to say that they off. would kill them and pose them. <laughs> I did no. not think it was after <laughs> the photograph. Maybe. They didn't technically say the order, but I assume oh, it was God. afterwards. I think Stuck they got them. in and like disturbed the nest. And I guess oh. they thought M- Mama Bird oh. wouldn't come back, so they just uh, killed They them. thought they were being humane or something, I, maybe? I guess. But she was like, Spoozy. no, there's yeah. no, no that need sounds... to do that. She's like, yeah, just horrible. don't touch them, and right. it's fine. Get a longer lens. Oh, wait, what time are we talking about? <laughs> uh, early 1900s? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, she did it, so they could do it. Right. Um, in 1903, she sent her first story to... Metropolitan Magazine, Ooh. and her first, oh, what did I do here? I wrote a little thingy. You wrote a song about it? I put that it? at the bottom, <laughs> so I'm going to skip over that part. Okay, okay, okay. Um, She started studying moths, making photographs of them, and... Um, like watercolors, I think she would make like a photographic print and then like hand color it. Right. Okay. With watercolors, um, with the sex with the success of her book sales, uh, she uh went back to try and purchase her birth home, uh-huh. but it burned down. Oh no! I mean, it's a good thing they weren't still left there. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, one of her yeah, other brothers yeah, died, um, and she ended up taking in her niece, okay. who was like about 12. Gotcha. Um, she would gather up plants and bring them home, and many of the wildflowers that she found are now rare or endangered species. Oh, see, she's starting to sound a lot more like my husband now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me bring home these wild endangered uh-huh. things. Uh-huh. <laughs> So then I'm responsible. <laughs> uh, she moved to California in 1919. Cool. And she started her own film company. What? And produced films of several of her novels. Oh. And became one of Hollywood's first female producers. Cool. And in 1924, nice. was am- among the first women to form her own production company. Look at that. And I'm just picturing Yay. her hanging out with Mary Pickford. And right, exactly. Uh, and Alice wasn't. Blanchet. Alice never made it to Los Angeles. She stayed mm-hmm. in New York and then back in France. Um, but yes, also probably with uh, Dorothy Arsner kind of around mm-hmm. that time too. So yay, yeah. that's awesome sauce. But, and, uh, but unfortunately, oh no, what happened in <laughs> California? No. It's like every time she gets like a little bit like, oh, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Who died? She did. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no. Spoiler. What? Wow. Wow. It's not funny. It really is. It's funny. ironic. <laughs> Which there was a car accident. Oh no! Uh, her car collided with a streetcar. Ah! Oh! And she was just thrown from it. This and is like she Frida had... Kahlo style. I know. That's but what Frida I was Kahlo thinking. like broke her back though and survived. Yeah. Jean. She rolled like her like like her hip and her ribs or something. Okay. Like they took her to the hospital, but she died within a couple hours. Oh no! But she was sixty one. Okay. I mean, yeah, she's well, not the youngest, but still. Aww. Um, she was originally buried in California, right? But um, and her daughter after she died, but eventually wait, her daughter died that day. Okay, no, of old age. No. Oh, okay, I don't okay. know how long her daughter <laughs> lived, but like after right. her daughter died, she was also buried there. Okay, but the family moved both her and her daughter back to Indiana to uh, one of the properties. Gotcha. Eventually, nice. um, her book sold more copies. Um, than any other American author, 25 million worldwide. Whoa. She wrote 26 books. 26? 
Mm -hmm. No wonder I see so many different ones around yeah. here. <laughs> um, there's Goodness. novels, nature books, poetry books, children's books. They've been translated into 23 languages and Braille. Ooh. And here in Indiana, there are two historic homes of hers that you can visit. Mm -hmm. The Limberlost Cabin in Geneva and the Cabin at Wildfire Woods right. in Rome City, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And one of them's like way up at the very top near Michigan. Right. And the Michigan. other one is kind of like halfway in between Indianapolis and Michigan. Gotcha. On the far east side. Okay. Nice. Um, her novels are said to be full of descriptions of nature and they're romantic and they all have a like going back to nature to find yourself kind of theme. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, a couple of her popular ones, Freckles. Freckles. It's about a one-handed one young man working in a lumber company. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, girl the Limber Lost is yes. about a poor girl who sells moss to afford school. Oh. And Laddie is like a semi-autobiography. Okay. About like her it's brother. named after her brother, but it's like her experiences, but I think it's like written through his perspective okay that but like brother that died yeah in the river yeah so, so like it's a third an honor <laughs> <laughs> but it's like like Creative her kind of fiction. experience growing up gotcha. kind of thing and keeper of the bees is about oh, a yeah. veteran who's new to beekeeping oh uh. right so and a bunch of them have been made into movies all of them since they were published before, I forget what the little cutoff is now, before 1927 yeah. or whatever. Something like that, yeah. They're all in the public open, domain. yeah, public domain. There's been lots of, I mean, she made movies, but then like they keep making, remaking her movies over yeah. and over and over again. Nice. But yeah. Sweet. Uh, uh, Gene Stratton Porter. We <laughs> almost did a Gals Guide mm -hmm. field trip and then everything went wrong. I forget uh, what happened with that. Like, I remember it was weather, it was timing, it was sickness. Like, it seemed like, I think it was even car trouble. It felt like anything and everything mm -hmm. went, like, sideways I for that I don't think trip. anybody was interested either. And then there was there the like thing three of, of us. <laughs> yeah, we were down to, like, two or three, and it's like, like the do we really want to go? Uh -huh. Yes, if you don't participate, <laughs> it gets a cancel. It. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I understand, because I don't like to participate, but it's a cool idea, right? <laughs> I know. Exactly. It's one of those things. We could all get in a car and go road tripping. Mm -hmm. uh. I was going to say it's to a winery. <gasps> I had that on the plan. Yes, so. that's right. Oh, yeah. There was a winery. Wasn't there also uh -huh. like a lavender field oh, or something yeah. like that? Yeah, it's it was going to be, be real great. nice. Yeah. yeah. But no, we don't deserve nice things, Katie. No, I'm never giving it to you again. <laughs> never again. That's totally fair. <laughs> we missed out. But we probably should. Yes. Exactly. So that's pretty incredible accomplishing yeah, all of that she's very prolific i didn't realize 26 yeah. bucks mm -hmm. yeah. wow Amazing. and she didn't even start writing until till later yeah exactly nice Donna, probably Donna. after her husband died and she had more time and freedom <laughs> that's the lesson we're taking away from this is you either got to hold out to be an old maid or <laughs> right, you got to right. hope for yeah. you know like <laughs> widow. you know early widowed but he did it just if you're lucky i don't know when he died but i don't think right. he died before her oh okay but she was okay. like well we're well off enough yeah. That as long as I am doing my wifely duties, right. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And then, like, she bought, I think, those houses with her own money. Oh, nice. From her books. Yeah. And she's like, this I is remember uh, they were talking about, like, they have some of her letters or something. She was, like, compromising with them. Like, she bought this thing mm -hmm. in the woods because she was like, I want to live in the woods. But then she made the interior to his liking oh, to please him. Look at that. The ultimate. Mm. Wasn't a, a woodsy kind of fella. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Not mean, a whole lot about him. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Right, He's exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah. The older dude. Yeah, I, I want to call him man. Charles Darlington, though. <laughs> Charles <laughs> Everybody from that time is yes. an older dude with all those businesses mm -hmm. he owned. Mm -hmm. Mr. Darlington. Mr. Darlington. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, have you ladies ever read any of her books? Because I will admit, I have not. No. I read Girl of the Limberlust. What'd you think? Does it hold up? <laughs> um, Is it I more of a kid's say, book? I wouldn't say that if, if 
somebody was straight reading it mm. now. Right. Like, if my son read it, he would just want to throw it across the room. <laughs> right. He'd be like, mm, nah. It, <laughs> it, it has, it's very dated. Right. Yeah. It. Gotcha. That's fair. But I think that the theme mm-hmm. is is good. Gotcha. I think it has a lot going on. Yeah. And that's why they keep making it into movies because yeah. you can mm-hmm. pull out all the plot points and leave out some of the the flowery la- the weird language and the right. you know some of the dated stuff and just turn it into a story of a girl who just really wants to go to school and Yeah. Um, you know, who lives in this in nature lives and in by kind the of wild poverty. Bash. Yeah. So <laughs> But yeah, I I would think if you reading it now, yeah, it's it's exactly what you think. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> right. It's yeah. a little old timey. Yeah, a little, yeah. Freckles little. too. It's like <laughs> making your own ketchup. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on that way. Your own ketchup. Same there thing. you go. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's not by any means. It's not bad. Right. Right. It's exactly. Yeah. Just really drags when you compare it to. It's more a tough read. Writing. Yeah. Mm. That's totally fair. That's why I'm always like going. Yeah. We read Frankenstein as one mm-hmm. of the, the books. Yeah. And that was a tough read, but it was totally different than what I thought it was. Yes. And so I think I have Girl of Limber Lost in my head as kind of like a little, you know, kid's story, kind of like a, a little woman or little women or um, uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Little House on the Prairie yes. kind of um, story is what I have in my head. So I would say it doesn't it really doesn't have all of the like charm like some of those you can pull out you know it has a more charming element yeah um but i really get i think of its time i think yeah. people really loved it for its message yeah mm-hmm. and um and that's why get they, you an education girl and that's why they <laughs> yeah that's why they keep coming yeah. back to it nice i like the universalness of it <laughs> sweet did you guys have any questions for bonnie Dun, dun, dun. Well, you started it, darling, so you get to end the episode. <laughs> well, that wraps it up for us this week. And join us next week for another cool woman of history as Gal's Guide podcast continues. Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.